Great. So here we are. Lecture number three. The title of this lecture is WTF. <laughs> what the hell's going on? What the hell is all this? What are we doing? <laughs> what the hell is all that? So uh, basically question and answer. I mean yesterday, the first day I sort of did the arches thing and the and the last day I did the thumb thing. There's the rotation thing as well. There's the arm thing, which seems to be very, very relevant to what we're doing. So I, I've already explained a lot of it in the lessons. So are there sort of any questions or any clarifications or anything that we could? I have an idea about uh, an awareness through piano movement lesson that we could do with, of course, on our knees instead of on, on a keyboard. But before we do it, like I'd like sort of like to, where are you all at? What questions do you have? What's clear? What's not clear? Yes. So, so um, just when I in the in the break when you were having your nap, when I was playing the third drums, I noticed that I'm kind of there's something here that I'm kind of holding on to, and since we were working on the shoulders this morning, I thought maybe so we came we came started with the, the hand and the fingers and the arch and, mm -hmm. and all this business here and, the, and so maybe we could take it up a little a step more into the, into the body and um, see where, where we can, I mean, mm -hmm. continuing from the morning session, which was great to free mm -hmm. up some space here. So do you feel that you have always had this kind of tension or something in your collarbones, but now you've got aware of it because yeah. of the lesson we did? I this guess. Morning? Yeah. Is it possible? Is, is that's what's going that's on? That's very possible. Yeah. I hope. I hope that's the explanation and not that I acquired some tension today, <laughs> which I didn't have before. So. <laughs> it's maybe more tense. Great. Maybe I can expand on that because yes. I. I realize when I'm playing piano also back home that I tend to kind of bring my shoulder up for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I try kind of to use the thumb and so on, this is kind of also inducing the same motion. I, uh, I think it does not need to be like that. Mm -hmm. Or I hope it does not need to be like that. <laughs> well, you don't like this thing with your shoulder? No. Uh, well, for my mind, if I'm doing the classic arm out, the classic arm out, which pulls the thumb down and destroys the arch, and then the shoulder's coming out, that to me is unpleasant and not very functional. Mm -hmm. But if I stand up on my thumb, stand up on my thumb, mm -hmm. now the elbow's going up, but you see the elbow's actually following the hand forward. It's going mm -hmm. out and around and actually back towards the middle in a kind of an arc. And that, if you look carefully, that opens the collarbone, the collarbone, the same way we were doing in the ATM this morning. Mm -hmm. And now the shoulder is doing that thing, but for me it's no longer dysfunctional. Okay, for so, me, so then, then it has actually... Yeah, because, because it's one element in the chain, in the kinematic chain, mm -hmm. and it's going all the way through the shoulder, into the collarbone and into the, the, the sternum actually. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a different state of affairs. It may look like the same motion, but this is isolated. Okay. This is isolated and jammed, and this is opening and following, opening yeah. and following. But, but I feel strain in muscles here. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, so actually, okay, look, come on, do it, do it, and now come back on your thumb a little bit. Okay. Lean back in the chair. Mm -hmm. And now a little bit like this. And so not so extreme far forward for yourself. Come back here, come back. Can we keep come back on the floor? Yeah. Mm. And balance there lightly, a little bit lighter. And so you feel the thumb muscles are, oh, they're working, but they're working a little lighter. It's not like, ah, totally stressed out. But mm. they, they're sort of this, this nice mid-range effort where you can fool around with the actual curvature with the thumb. And it's not quite so hard, like really firmly pressed. Now just press lightly, almost don't press, and do the same kind of thing. And this, and this, and this. With the pelvis, with the pelvis. Yeah. Very lightly, almost not touching. Almost as if you, you, I'm, 
you're holding it and doing like that. That's it. Make your shoulders peaceful. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was too much struggle down here. Mm, okay. And, and you see, like I never know. Like some people, they need a strong effort just to sort of get something woken up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And many other people need this light non-effort and just skeletal connection with almost nothing in terms of muscularity. Just like, oh, because then the bones, sometimes this bony structure just goes somewhere completely unexpected because some damn muscle let go. And we, I can't tell you in advance which one it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, you know, my own dystonia, which is still bugging me, I feel like there's multi layers of dysfunction in, and damn, that damn soldier just won't let go. It's like, it's going to keep up that pattern. It's unbelievable. It's like there's a devil in there. And after the lesson this morning, which I did not do, I just taught you, and my shoulder was there. <laughs> it was very nice, because the brain is learning. While I'm teaching, my brain is doing the stuff that is seen. That was kind of nice. Thank you. <laughs> yes? Yeah, that's good. I, so, my, my wrist keeps doing this, so I... Yeah, so less pressure on the thumb, less pressure on the thumb, and then drop your elbow. And, uh, ah, okay, do all that again. Go, go back where you started. Now, would you please, please engage your pelvis somehow on all this? <laughs> like, you just did all that without moving the core at all. And that's why it's not working. For you, you need to get your pelvis somewhere, you get your pelvis somewhere. You. Mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about changing girlfriends, I'm talking about <laughs> transforming your piano playing. <laughs> I mean, somewhere you on the piano. <laughs> In relation to yourself. Yourself! <laughs> Yeah, so this whole thing with the, the thumb, like the, the thumb is highly complex. So we need to be gentle with it. Initial firmness, like, oh my god, it's a, like a pillar. And then gentle, 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 more felt in Christ, more just skeletal without any muscles, almost let go, but somehow still standing because the bones just happen to line up. And, and then, oh, my shoulder opened. And, oh, my shoulder opened here. My shoulder didn't lift, it just kind of felt more open in there, and I, and I can move around this way, pivot with a light touch, a light pivot, a light pivot, like that. That's very good now. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, you a little bit more forward and back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's right. And now you, Nicholas, circles. The whole shebang. All 360 degrees done with the, and now smaller, 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 smaller. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thomas, now you go in, uh, go in there, go in there, and now come back here. Right, uh, your left hand, Thomas, you're here, you're here, left hand, now come back here. Yeah, 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 and now go around the other side. Okay. That's right. That's right. And now, Thomas, you reverse... Fuck! Christian! Thomas. <laughs> Christian, reverse the direction of your circle. That's it! Okay. Uh, very nice. Mario, don't tense your fingers. That's right, Mario. That's right. Oh, this is very, yeah, 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 very nice, very nice, very nice. Wow, that's an amazing, question. what? Yeah, it's an amazing ATPO. It's just <laughs> like, we could do, sit here all day and just sort of do all the variations. It's like the forward and back, forward and back, side to side. One quarter of a clock, another quarter of a clock, half the clock, the whole clock, this quarter of the clock across the diagonal from one corner to the I mean, you can just keep making up variations and then it's a little wristwatch. Oh, it's an alarm clock. Oh, it's a wall clock. Oh, it's Big Ben. For instance, there I just gave like 20 variations. Mm -hmm. So you press pause 15 times in the last 10 seconds and see which one it is. 
Yes. When I play the piano, I sometimes observe, not always, that I get back pain. Mm -hmm. But it's not here. It's in the pain of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, is it, it so the, the shoulder blade? There's the inner edge of the shoulder mm -hmm. blade, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it along the inner edge or yeah. somewhere else? It's along yeah. the inner edge, and it's not closer to the spine. It's, it's like actually right along the inner edge of the yeah. shoulder blade. That's that's why you need all this. So you need more of the pelvis because when the pelvis is the originator of the movement, then the shoulders let go. Why? Because the shoulders become a conduit for movement energy emanating from here and going through to the hand. And movement energy emanating in the hand and going back the other way, but through the shoulder into the core. So if the core, it's even written in Arnold Schultz, The Riddle of the Pianist's Finger, one of the best books on piano technique. And he writes something completely wrong. 1936. In order to, to have more precision in the, the complex movement of the fingers, the fine movement of the fingers. Fix the hip joints. Mm -hmm. Stabilize the body. Create a stable foundation from which the fingers can move. It's exactly wrong. And so, you know, it's in the tradition. And I look at many pianists that come to many violinists as well. They stabilize in order to be able to move precisely. And it's in the tradition. It's in our cell, our, co our collective self-image. And unfortunately, from, from a Feldenkrais perspective, it's just like it's a disaster. But, you know, fortunately, from a Feldenkrais perspective, it's, we have lots of work to do. <laughs> we can help all you guys. <laughs> but you really, so you will find that I was just a little bit too stable. Okay, that's a, ah, just let it go. Mm -hmm. Ah, just let it go. And it's two, basically two things, the body with the hand, the body with the hand. The body with the hand, the body with the hand, that's the four directions of, of the six. And uh, the, 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 the body with the hand, the body with the hand, okay? So those are the, the three cardinal directions of movement. But there's six, because there's left and right, that's side bending. Forward and back, that's flexion extension. And there's rotation, this way rotation, that, that's rotation. So those are three. Uh, and then there's opposite, the body opposite to the hands, flexion extension, the first cardinal direction of movement. The body, wait a minute, the body opposite to the hands, side bend. Uh, this is with the hands, rotation, so, uh, uh. the body opposite to the hands in rotation. All of those happen, uh, the what together happens more. This one in side bendings happens more than this one. <laughs> this one happens much more in rotation. This one happens virtually never, as far as I know, in rotation. This one, the differentiated one in the first cardinal direction of movement, flexion and extension, happens almost as much as, or perhaps more than, the body and the hands together. But they, they both happen. So these are all of the directions available to us. And that's what actually I wanted to do the ATPM on, but I want more questions before we... Should we just segue into that, or is, are there any other questions? So hopefully this lesson will give you the tools you need to... Because why is the shoulder in pain. There's no movement here. The, the sh and so now the shoulder has to do more than its fair share of work. The shoulder, the, the, the hand needs to be oriented here on the keyboard, here on the keyboard, there on the keyboard, here on the keyboard. The body should help. The body should help. The body should help. The body should help. Now the shoulder has an okay amount of work to do. The body's not helping. The shoulder's overworking. It's overworking, it's overworking, it's overworking. Plus, if this arch falls down, the shoulder will immediately tense to stop the arch falling farther. So there's an absence of work in the hand 
too much work in the shoulder. Absence of work in the body, too much work in the shoulder. Restore the work of the body, the shoulder's not overworking. Restore the right work of the hand, the shoulder is freed from overwork. So all that pain is coming from various compensations. Because somewhere else in the system, somebody's not doing enough. Mm -hmm. And then many times it's the wrist, many times the hand's not doing enough and then the wrist is overworking. So you think, see people playing piano like this and you think it's beautiful, it's so supple and wavy and artistic and everything. And it is for lyrical stuff, it's beautiful, but many times it's masking a hand that's not doing its job and it's actually a compensation. And that's why when, in a case like here, is when we go in, okay, your wrist loves doing this, let's take it the other way. Uh, 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 right, because that was a compensation and now it doesn't know how to let the compensation go. But when the hand, gets its potency back by becoming full and having the grasping action restored to it, then the wrist will be able to breathe out and come to a true neutral. So, um, we basically, we did, in the first day, we did the flexion and extension. Uh, no, extension and flexion. So just review that. And again, uh, if your head is going back and forth, then that means the palm body is following the hands forward and following the hands back. And now, if the head stays in the middle, it stays for no, it stay look, it stays forward when you rock the pelvis back. You slump. It stays back when you rock the pelvis forward. You straighten up. Then, but look, I mean, do, help yourself with your hands. Move the hands away from you. Rock the pelvis back. Leave the head forward. Okay. Move the hands towards you. Rock the pelvis forward. Leave the head back. So the head, you can see it. The head actually moves, it does not move forward and back, it moves up and down. Going up and down now? Yeah. It's hard to do it really well. Yeah. But you, you try and sense and sense and sense. And even if it's close to a, a true vertical, it's great already because already the back is bending and bending and unbending in so many new ways. And that, if you have that, your shoulders are not going to hurt so much. Um, now, yeah, I, you know, did we do this well the other day? I forget. Take a bird beak and do teetering toucan with the, those hands going this way, but rock the body and now. Uh, so do you see, this hip joint is actually off the chair. Lift, it, lift the hip off the chair and put the ear down. That's it. Do teetering toucan the other way. Lift this hip and put the ear. Okay, forget it. Do it without the hands. It's too complicated. So if you just, if you just put your left... Uh, it, I'll do it mirror image. You do right. If you just put your right ear on your right shoulder, where does the weight go? Okay, feel the weight on the two, hip joint, on the two sits bones. You put the ear, the right ear, towards the right. And normally, most of us will put the weight onto the right sits bone. Okay? So if, and, and look, if you kept doing that, you're going to fall over. Okay, so come back. So now put that ear on that, towards that shoulder, but put the weight on the uh, that's it, on the other. That's right, and come back. Again, just do one side, don't do both sides. That's it. And actually lift this one off the bench. Lift it. That's it. And come back. Again. That's it. And you see, your back is bending sideways. These ribs are folding in like an accordion. And these ribs are opening up like an accordion. Now, put your right hand over your head on your left ear. And 
see whether it's even more. Uh, try not to crack it. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's have some fun. Good. So now, scoot over to the left side of your chair and make uh, the left sits bone hang in midair. If you can, if these chairs are and now the same hand, same hand. And now, instead of lifting this sits bones, drop this sits bone, drop it. Let it drop more. And come back up. That's it. And let it drop more. Oh my goodness, look how much flexibility there is in my side bending now. Okay, now stay like this, stay like this, make a bird beak, bam! Do a teetering toucan, and a teetering toucan, and a teetering toucan, and a teetering toucan. <laughs> I should go over here so you can see the camera bit. Teetering toucan. Good. Come back. Take a rest. You see, you, 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 what we were doing in the lesson, it's going to just live in your body more naturally. You'll be doing it, you won't even think, of, oh, this is so weird. No, no, it's just, it's, it becomes normal. Because we inject the patterns deeper and deeper and deeper into the, neuro, the motor cortex and neuromotor system. Eventually they get down to the brain stem and then it's just like, it's like riding a bike. But the first time you do it, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 so, watch your coffee. Uh, uh, put the left ear towards the left shoulder. And, oh, look, we, we went right back to the old way. We're going to fall over. So, left ear, left shoulder, weight onto the right. That's right. And lift. The left hip joint. Lift. No, 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 no. Yes! <laughs> lift it, lift it. That's it. Put the hand. Oh, wait a minute. Which. Oh, fuck. I'm so fucking dyslexic. Yeah, thank you. That's it. Shut up. More cancer information. That's what I needed. Okay, over here. So it's now the right sits bone hanging in the air. The right sits bone hanging in the air. Da -da 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 -da. Let it, let it. And don't force. You see, the, the ribs will fold more. Muscles will actually let go all through the rib cage if you just let gravity. Gravity is taking the arm and the head down to one side. Gravity is taking the sits bone down on the other side. And feel, gently feel gravity take you more and more and more. Yeah. And then make a bird beak. And which way does teetering toucan want to teeter? Hmm. I think so. Like this. I wonder what it be. Oh, this feels so weird. No, that's like it, it's no fucking way. Okay, that was very interesting. It's like you try to teeter the toucan the other way. It's like does not compute. Does not compute. <laughs> ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> dysfunction. Dysfunction. Yeah. Okay. Come back. Two bird beaks. Two bird beaks. And just you know, so this way. Without doing teetering toucan. This way. And you notice the, 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 the range is better. Hmm? And then add the teetering toucan. Add the teetering toucan. Add the teetering toucan. Add the teetering toucan. Can you make your bird beak more long? Not a short bird beak. A long bird. Yes! Yes! And now. Du -du -du. Shit, what am I doing? Look what I just started doing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the hell? 
That's just, okay. Now I don't know anymore. Which, which teetering two cannons goes which way. That's better. Lift the hip. Drop, drop your ear. No, yeah, okay. Drop the other ear, lift that hip. That's it. And now it teeters by itself. Look, you're doing it and your hands are te teetering by themselves. That's beautiful. No, no, you're, you're back doing it wrong. You're falling off the chair. You're falling off the chair. The ear goes this way, the body goes that way. No, the body's going that way. Not your head. That's your head. <laughs> Sit in the middle. Put your ear here and lift your right hip. Lift your right hip. Thank you. Come back to the middle. Put your ear down here and lift your left hip. You see, it's very easy to get all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to catch yourself and stop yourself. Very good. Drop your ear a little bit more. That side's good. But on this side, let your ear come up. Lift. There, you did it. Don't force, but you've, you've got a little extra juice, yeah? If you find you can't lift the ear, drop the ear anymore, then lift the hip a little more. Look. That's it. That's enough. Just a tiny bit. Gosh. You like Feldenkrais. Have you been doing Feldenkrais before? No. Yeah. Look at her. She's, you look like... <laughs> you're, you're, like you're, you're radiating. Look at her complexion. Look at her. <laughs> that's just, <ooh>. Tea. <laughs> oh, that's tea? <laughs> tea. tea. <laughs> really? It's I really think good. it's women power. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was a <laughs> sit team. Yeah. Great. Sit, just sit for a moment and take stock. How am I sitting? Do I feel different? If I went to play the piano now, would something different happen? With all this, this flexion and extension and this side bend, what the hell? So this is a great warm-up. You take sex, segment, any part of this lesson and you just, you know, maybe just a few seconds before you go to play the piano. We're going to do this one now. And just sort of remind yourself, my arms are attached to this amazing entity, which is complex and moving and breathing and responding and supporting in movement, not supporting as a solid foundation. There's nothing solid about it. This, this, even the sits bones on the chair are rocking and continually changing their relationship to the bench. So, here, uh, bird beaks again, please. Uh, but this time, slide one bird beak forward and one bird beak back. Then the other bird beak forward and the other beak back. Yeah. And don't even think about the body. But, oh, but maybe did you notice? Oh my God. Are you turning? Yes, you am. Yeah, so turn more. When the when the when the, the the bird beak slides forward, okay. When the bird beak slides back, move that knee back. So let the knees move in the same way that the bird beaks are moving. That's right. So the sliding bird beak is telling the knee, hey, come on, knee, move, 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 move. And then you turn to and by the way, and now start looking behind you this way, and start looking behind you that way. And you notice how much the knees can help you look far, and the bird beaks can help you look far. And now forget the bird beak, but when you come forward, you slide the hand down the shin. And then rotate the other way, and slide the hand down the other shin. And notice that if you slide the hand down, you can actually look further behind you. And slide the hand down to look further behind you. You forgot to move your knees. Move the knees. Move the knees. The, yeah, one sits bone is moving forward on the bench, the other sits bone is moving backward on the bench. That's what moving the knees are. The sits bones, they don't just rock, they slide. I'm doing it so much that my, my cushion is even turning. My cushion is turning. Like that. 
So really nice. So uh, you can try this in your chairs, but I'm, I'm going to do this at the, at the piano, just a little demonstration. In general, as a general rule, which is not even a rule, it's kind of a, a general guideline, which of course is going to not be in many cases. But as a general guideline, the flexion and extension is for the hand on keys in the middle range of the keyboard. Flexion, extension, and this is mainly a rhythmic thing. So rhythmic pause. I did, I wasn't playing loud. 
was my structure. My, that's just my, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to join my structure. I didn't even stand up, I lay down.